What's up everybody? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the OpenAI API. This allows us to use things like ChatGPT with Python. This set of tools really allows us to do some pretty cool things, and we'll just touch upon a couple of them in this video. For instance, by the end of it, I'll have built a small Python application that inputs a description to a YouTube video and outputs a few titles that we might use uh, for the video itself. With that being said, uh, let's get started. All right, so before we start coding, I've opened up OpenAI's homepage, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on products, and I'm gonna click on documentation. So I'm gonna wait for it to load, and over to the left, I see a thing called a quick start, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Now, in this quick start, there's a bunch of different things that you have to follow, and more or less, we're gonna go ahead and follow this tutorial, though I might do a little bit extra or maybe skip some, some things that we don't necessarily need. So with that being said, I'm gonna kind of scroll down. We'll set up Python. We'll actually do the virtual environment that they mention here. Uh, we're not gonna install Python, so if that's something you have to do, uh, you can either follow this tutorial or follow one of the countless other tutorials that are available on the web. Uh, so we'll skip that step, but we'll do the virtual environment as well as uh, installing the OpenAI Python library. We'll set up our API key. So that'll be the second step. And we'll also uh, use this code as a starting point and then show how you can kind of make some small modifications to it to make uh, you know your life a little bit easier. So these are really the only three steps to the tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and just follow that. But we'll do you know things a little bit differently, so hopefully that'll be a bit easier down the line for you. Uh, I would do want to mention here that they have Python, which is what we're going to be using and what I would recommend. But if you know you're not really interested in using Python, you can use Node.js, and they have a whole tutorial there with different code. As you can see, it's not Python code anymore, but rather the JavaScript. Uh, or you can use curl, which is a command. Uh, command line utility. So you could go ahead and use that if that's something you wanted to do. But we're going to go ahead and use Python. Uh, you know, just judging by the hat that I'm wearing, you could have kind of guessed that. So with that being said, we're going to kind of jump right into it. All right, so I'm on my Mac, though this tutorial should work fine for Windows. Uh, instead of using the command line, you could use PowerShell. But that being said, I have my terminal opened up. I have a folder created for this project, and I'm actually going to make a new folder. So I'm gonna make a folder and I'm gonna call it uh, YouTube titles. And I'm gonna go ahead and make that folder. And now I'm gonna change directory. So I'm gonna kind of move my terminal into this folder. I typed in U and then I typed tab for the autocomplete. Uh, and there we go. I hate you. There was actually another folder there and that's just because I had written out the code for this video uh, beforehand just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, to follow along. So now I've have, I have it set up so that I can just type in code and dot. This is gonna load up VS Code. And here we are. And it's gonna load up the folder I just created in my VS Code. So let's go ahead and make this as big as uh, the screen will allow us to. There we are. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set up my virtual environment. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually get rid of that search thing because we don't need that. I'm going to create an empty folder and I'm going to call it .vnv and I'm going to go back to my terminal. So let me go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to do pip env install and the main package we're going to need is OpenAI. Actually, this is the only package we're going to need. I'm going to go ahead and click that. It's going to run and so this is what allows us to interact with the uh, ChatGPT and OpenAI uh, via Python. So that's the the main package, so that's all installed. And if you go to the .ve, the .venv file, uh, if you go into that, you can kind of see they have all sorts of files that have loaded up. We don't have to worry about any of these, but this is just to support our interaction with OpenAI. So now I'm gonna to need to make a Python file, and I'm gonna call it uh, chatbot, not chatboy, but rather chatbot.py. And there we go, so we have an empty Python file and we are ready to go. All right, so we're gonna go back to that tutorial. So let me load that up. There we go. 
And we're gonna scroll all the way down to the Python code. And we're just gonna copy that by clicking the copy button here. Gonna go back to our VS code and paste it in. I'm gonna save the file and I have a formatter that kind of changes things. And I'm going to highlight the code and press shift enter. And you can see that it actually opens up a kind of this own little Jupyter uh, server here or Jupyter interactive shell rather. And I have that configured. Uh, if you've never seen how to configure this before, uh, it's just an option in your VS code. But I'll link a video in the description below from uh, another YouTuber who kind of outlined how you go ahead and do that. So with that being said, uh, you just have to run this file in some way. But here we can actually see that we have an OpenAI error and there's all sorts of text, but basically we haven't configured the API key. Uh, and if we go back to the tutorial, we did actually skip step two of configuring the API key. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna put this over here because we don't necessarily need that. And we're gonna configure the API key. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go here and I'm gonna make a new file and I'm gonna call it .env. It's different than .venv and it's kind of shorthand for environment, whereas the venv is virtual environment. So going back, we're going to see here that we need to actually uh, get the API key working. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get an API key. To do this, I'm gonna just click this tab and I can see the thing that says API key page. So we're gonna get there. And this is something you can navigate to without having to go through the tutorial. You can see the URL here is actually just openai.com forward slash API keys with a hyphen in between the API and the keys. And we're gonna go ahead and create the key. So I'm gonna do this, YouTube title. There we go. And I'm gonna do create secret key and wait for it to go. And I have the secret key and I'll go ahead and copy that. And in this .env file, I'm gonna do open AI API key exactly like this. And I'm gonna do it like this. So keep in mind that we are not putting spaces here. We're not putting quotes around this here. We're not doing any of that. We're just doing exactly like this. Uh, we don't wanna, uh, if you do it in a different way, uh, it might not read the key properly. So let's keep that in mind. And now the API key is here. Okay, so now if I go ahead and run this, and no, I exited out of the previous interactive shell. If you don't do that, uh, it won't load in the environment variable. And I am running it and it'll actually work now. There we go. And we can kind of see we get, let's make this a little bigger. It says chat completion message. So this is some class that's defined by OpenAI and it actually gives in this uh, the response to the question we wrote. In fact, it's a poem about recursion, which is uh, you know something funny uh, and clever, but, and then you can kind of scroll through. So it gives everything uh, in this special class that's given by OpenAI. So we'll have to go ahead and parse this uh, class in order to get the response, but we'll, we'll do that in uh, due time. So I'm gonna go back out here. And in fact, this is mostly how you parse it. Uh, the only way, the only thing additionally you have to do is just type in content and that'll work. So now everything is good. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and make our life a little bit easier by uh, writing things into files and reading and writing out of them. So let's go ahead and configure that. So to do that, I'm gonna need a couple of helper functions. I'm gonna put them at the top of the file here. So just a couple helper functions. Uh, I'll put the code uh, to this video and uh, the description below to so there'll be a link to the github repo containing this code and we can kind of see that we have an open file and a write file and these are exactly uh, what you would expect uh, now i'm going to create a folder the prompts and i'm going to create a couple so i'll create a system uh system prompt so dot txt and i'll create a query so this will be the query that we're gonna input into the model. So now that we have these, I'm gonna just actually copy and paste some system prompt here. So here we go. So it says, you are an expert YouTube channel manager. You'll be working to increase the number of subscribers and get more views on our channel. So the system prompt is intended to be a prompt that 
basically sets the scene for uh, the AI to help, to, you know, to respond to. Like it's basically to say, here's your role as the AI. Try to, you know, you know, form, you know, respond to uh, our request as if you were this uh, this person or this group of people sometimes. But yeah, so this is basically the the system. So we're gonna save that and close out of it. Now for the specific query, I'm just gonna copy something like this. So I've created a tutorial on how to get started using OpenAI. So that's exactly this, uh, this video. Uh, please provide five example titles with a brief description as to why it would be a good title. We're gonna go ahead and save that. Uh, and we'll see the responses later and see if it does a good job. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that one. Now we're going to load in these particular, uh, these particular prompts. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna get some code again from off the screen, some code I had written earlier. And below the client, I'm gonna put these. Now it's yelling at me to import this pack module called OS. So let's go ahead and import that at the top. And this is basically just creating a, a way to, you know, this is basically just creating the path to the files. So you can see that the directory is prompts and the file in the directory is system.txt and query.txt. And then I'm just using my helper function to actually read the file and read the text. So instead of uh, this content being this poetic assistant, now one thing that's annoying here is that the text goes off the screen. So on my Mac, I'm just gonna press Option Z and it's gonna go ahead and take care of that. Then I can just highlight this and type in system here. And here I can type in, instead of system, I can type in query. So now these are all situated. Uh, I've actually saved the file because it's just a habit. Now, instead of printing the response, I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder and call it responses.txt. Uh, sorry, not .txt, just responses. And this is just gonna be an empty directory. And instead of, uh, you know, instead of printing, I'm gonna actually write to this file. It's a little bit more convenient. I'm gonna go ahead and again, get some code from off the screen. So I'm gonna write to a file called titles.txt in the responses directory. And then I'm going to write to file. So let's see. And indeed, GitHub Copilot is able to figure that out. So one thing to mention is you don't have to necessarily do it this complicated to make the path, but this is a little bit convenient for us because you know you might be following this tutorial on a you know Windows machine or even Linux. So just something like this you can be confident should work on any operating system. Whereas if I do it some other way, there's a chance it might break. So that's why we're doing it in this way. Uh, it's kind of best practice. And I'm gonna go ahead and save the file and highlight everything and press shift enter. And it's gonna go ahead and run. And it'll take some time. And eventually I get the check mark and you can see that the titles.txt appears here. And again, we have this text going off the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this smaller and just press option Z uh, again. And now it's uh, looks a little bit nicer. And here we go, we got some titles. So Mastering OpenAI, a step-by-step -step guide for beginners, unleashing the power of OpenAI, essential tips and tricks. And it gives a short exclamation, uh, sorry, not exclamation, a short explanation as to why they think these titles are good. So this one, this title creates an intrigue by suggestion that the tutorial will reveal valuable insights and methods for utilizing OpenAI effectively, enticing viewers to click and watch. These are just five different you know, titles that you can kind of pick and choose from. And there you go. So we've created a short uh, program with Python that you, know, you input some description and it outputs basically some suggested titles. All right, so that's really it to get started with using OpenAI's uh, API via Python. Now I will say that if you really wanted to just do what I did in this video, you could have done it through the ChatGPT uh, UI that's available online. But this does really open up the door to some pretty interesting uh, ways of automation. As now, uh, for instance, this system prompt here, I don't have to uh, constantly manage this. It's already in there and automatically being read into the file. And I could make this query uh, much, much longer and actually depend on variables. Uh, and in this way, you can really start automating some pretty interesting stuff.
Like for instance here, I, I really made the query very short and if you really wanted the best results, you would you definitely want to lengthen this uh, and perhaps, you know, add some actual uh, examples of good titles or things, you know, titles that you thought were good uh, with an ex explanation of why they were good titles. Uh, that way, you know, the, the AI would have a better chance of giving you a response that you actually want. Uh, so maybe we'll, you know, do that in another video, but in this video, I really just wanted to get you uh, situated with uh, using the OpenAI API uh, with Python uh, just to get started. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, and if you did and you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. That being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.